my name is Chantel, and I am representing uh, the alumni of uh, East Orange, uh, Cicely Tyson School of Performing and Fine Arts to be exact. And I am truly excited to uh, give you some insight and some history on what I know as the JUDL, what you guys know as the Nork Debaters. And I am truly grateful for my experience with them because they've given me so much confidence throughout my life. I debated from the years of 2003 to 2005. I have a lot of trophies, I have a lot of medals, and I couldn't have gotten that without the encouragement from Mr. Brett Ferrand himself. And I, I always saw how he was just so encouraging and he was eager for us to learn new things and to visit new places because of him. I I got to see Vermont for the very first time and to swim on their beach for the very first time. And I even got to go to Howard University. And to uh, I remember when we were going to Howard, Mr. Ferran actually put us on the train himself. He met, he met all of us at the train station. He put us on the train himself. And when we got back, he was I, it, it seemed like he just stayed at the train station because he was there uh, to greet us and to bring us back home. And he, and I, literally nothing came out of my pocket. Um, it was all afforded to me thanks to him and to his mission and just to uh, really show that children from Newark and children from urban areas can really shine and they can really grow and they can really be great people. And thanks to him, I've, I've met some lifelong friends. Some of them are doctors, some of them are lawyers. And I'm truly thankful that he's kept this thing going for so long. Brett Ferran, you are amazing. We honor you and we love you. But it takes a period of adjustment whenever you face a game changer. And that's what I ask of you, we all ask of you today. To get you through that period of confusion and ill ease with a new approach to education, experiment with it, make it your own, internalize it. One of those at home. I got a big old one and the metal is around it and my, my partner got first place, I got second place and you go to school the next day because you, you debate on Saturday, you go to school on Monday with your medal on. Oh man, and people are like, what you get your medal for? Man, it's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. As for me, I can be the first to tell you I am not great at this public speaking thing. Nah, okay. I might be able to fool you here somewhat, but I'm not really good at it. <laughs> but with public speaking, as you know, as Chantel mentioned, it's definitely confidence. It's a certain confidence that it gives. And once you're good at public speaking, especially as a performer on stage, as a singer, one of the best things you can do is be able to tell your story. But if you, you know, you can't really tell your story, you can't really speak. And that's one of the things, being in front of people, it also helps, you know, knock off stage fright. It helps to knock off all those other ancient feelings that you get when you actually speak to somebody else in public. And I would say for anybody else who have never done public speaking, take the chance, do it. It'll definitely make you way more confident as a speaker and make you way more confident as a person. So you'll be able to speak to anybody about anything, and especially if you're a debater, you'll be able to debate about anything <laughs> and debate about to anybody, and you can just be confident in all that you say. Right, and it also transfers over to the life of an artist and a musician, because if you want to make money mm -hmm. off of your craft, you're going to have to know how to promote yourself. Sure. Nobody mm -hmm. can promote you like you can promote you. You know, or or your mother. You, you, moms yeah, are, moms yeah. are great yeah. at promoting you. <laughs> yeah. Moms and grandmas, great at promoting you. But you you're gonna have to learn how to promote yourself. You know, whenever whenever an artist comes out with an album, they gotta do an interview. They gotta mm. do several interviews. So, sometimes mm. several a day. They go into the Breakfast Club. They go into uh, 
the Michael Strahan show, then they go on the uh, Michael and Kelly. They, mm -hmm. You know, they literally have to, they, they do a press tour mm -hmm. when they have a new album that comes out. Do you, can you imagine if John Legend came out with an album and we had no idea because he couldn't do a press tour? If he can't do it, be, but you, these, but thankfully you have these artists who I'm assuming have you know, spoken and dealt with someone that encourage that you know works on them with their public speaking. Yeah. But if you can get in on the ground floor, like when you're in middle school and high school, which I know the North Debaters has, if you can get in on the ground floor, um, that's perfect because you learn all of those things. You learn about posture. You learn about um, diction, which is truly important. Um, and it, all of that will transcend, and you'll be and you and it also gives you a confidence for you to walk in a room. And know what you want, mm -hmm. and act and accurately be able and successfully be able to ask for what you want and receive it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Got it. So, with that being said, do you think that that will play a part in fostering um, change, evolution? Absolutely. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because not only if, if for those of for those young people out there that want to be artists, um, whether it's through music or painting or um, whatever spoken word, whatever they want to do, you have to what you have to say to yourself: What? Who am I going to be today? What do I want to represent? Yeah. You know, mm. do I want to represent uh, trash or do I want to represent something higher? Do how do I want people to see my people? How do I want people to see my culture? And mm. I have to and you and you have to be a representative of what you want to put out. Mm -hmm. So um, you have to think about those things as well. And you have to, uh, like, I love uh, Ava DuVernay, uh, mm -hmm. the director. She has When They See Us out. And it, I mean, it is sparking so much conversation and controversy. And she, I, I watched her interview, her interview and she said, I, I never wanted to be this type of director. She was like, but here I am, Selma, and when they see us. And then she's, she's done some other things that weren't as controversial. But you have to be able, if you want to be in the spotlight, you have to be able to know when to take a stand for the culture, you know, and, and, and what represents you and what doesn't represent you well. Yes, yes. So with, with that on mind, are there any programs out there that you wish were embedded into the city a bit more in terms of the art? and youth participation here? Oh, absolutely. There, there's a program I'm familiar with in North Public Schools where it teaches kids about the performing arts and the different aspects of it. Mm -hmm. So it's not just solely singing or solely playing, but it helps to build leadership by showing them, hey, if you can't sing necessarily, that's okay. Because maybe you can run the lights. Or if you can't play, that's okay. Because there's, you could be an engineer, you could be a sound engineer. Or you can help run the stage. Or you can be a production manager. And there's so many other things that you can do. And I wish maybe a program like that last was more out there for others. So they can see, you don't always have to be in the spotlight, as my wife said you know, earlier with the fact that, you know, the artists may not understand it. You don't have to be out there. The people behind the scenes are the ones making the money. It's the same thing. You don't have to be the artist. Maybe you can be the production manager who has a big role to play on, for more than just a singer. They have to make sure everything is good. So programs like that, that shows you you can do more with the music industry than you think you can. True. And yourself? I, I totally agree with that. I think that... Um, I would have I would have loved to have that type of program. So if if I hadn't gone to a performing arts high school, I wouldn't have had that experience that I had to um, to really um, know the business and things like that, and and know that there are people behind the scenes that you know make as much or sometimes more as the mm -hmm. people as the people in front of the camera. And um, so yeah. I totally think that um, sometimes the media and things can be a, a bit misleading and they tell you that you're not successful if you're in front of the camera. But mm -hmm. you got people that are behind the camera that are just as successful, even down to the caterers. Yeah. You know, food, sure. food is art. Oh, yes. You know, sure. you got people baking these beautiful, big, beautiful cakes. That's art. You yes. know, you got people that can put these flavor palettes together. That's art. You know, and 
Uh, it's, it's unfortunate that people don't really know what success is. They see um, a dollar amount as successful, but how is your mental health? Mm -hmm. Are you doing what you love every day? Yeah, because yes. if you're not doing what you love every day, then your mental health really isn't always so great. Yes. You get stressed out easier. Mm -hmm. So if you know that, I, like I always knew that I never really wanted to be in the spotlight, but I always liked writing, I always liked poetry, and I knew that maybe, you know, I can, maybe I can write a song or two, and I have, <laughs> and I do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm totally fine with that. And I, if I can write a song for you and give it to you and you go sing it, perfect. You take, you take a lot of spotlight off of me because I don't have to worry about my weight. <laughs> I don't have to worry about a certain look. I don't have to worry about a certain style. I can be me. I can write a song for you and stay in my sweatpants. That's power. Yes. Yeah. That is power. Yeah. Wow. So it seems that art and expression is reserved for students. How do you think that we can better shift this discussion and encourage more adults to stick with it or get involved or have a, you know, just, just fall back in love with it? Oh my goodness, it's like a mm -hmm. lifesaver. Um, even at our, at our job at Soul Expression, we have adult students that come in for dance and for piano. Wow. Um, he's had the pleasure, of he taught two cousins and they were, um, above their 50s and they were like, yeah, we just wanted to do something cool together. Yeah. And they took piano classes. And, you know, just them learning how to play Mary Had a Little Lamb was, you know, golden for them. And you, you, I mean, just because you're of a certain age as an adult, you haven't lost your drive, you haven't lost your passion. And I think it's actually therapeutic to rediscover yeah. what you love and then some because I started out singing, then I went to instruments, and then I took a, I took a tap dance class, performed in a, in a show, and now I'm able to teach a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. to te teach some tap and teach some ballet and things like that. And, I, and I've discovered a love that I never knew that I really had. You know, so you, I, I would say step out there mm -hmm. and, and see, it, especially if it's relaxing and it puts a smile on your face, step out there and do it. Why not? We have, as adults, we have so many um, stresses of the world, so many mm -hmm. things to worry about. Mm -hmm. And if you can take the time out of your day to do something for yourself, and if that's taking some paint and putting it on the easel, do it. If that's, yeah, yeah. If that's going in, paying, $85 for some studio time for you to sing a song, for you to listen to for yourself. Listen, do it. I say do whatever makes you happy, especially if it is, um, if it's in the arts. I'm, I'm a big fan of the arts, so I'm always going to promote the arts. Of course. Exactly. Exactly. So tell me, what and who were some of your biggest influences? I would definitely start off with Stevie Wonder. And I know a lot of my people are definitely going to be heavy piano based, but I was a piano, I was a piano kid. So all I see is other piano players and how great they are. If it wasn't for someone like Stevie Wonder, I wouldn't know that I can play and sing. If it wasn't for somebody like Duke Ellington, mm -hmm. I wouldn't know I would be able to write as well as I can and have somebody play my songs. And the list go on. Even current people like John Legend and Alicia Keys, who are just great songwriters and great musicians and just all around great people who are doing so much for the arts and doing so much for other people. And even up to this show, I've recently discovered it called, what's that, Songland? And it's, it's a great show and John Legend was up there and he literally made somebody day for a songwriter by, when that songwriter won, he put their song out there. He sung the song, he played the song, and it was downloadable immediately. So that is an awesome thing to know that a songwriter can inspire a singer to want to do their stuff. So somebody like that is so inspirational for someone like me who is a musician but is also a songwriter as well. That's beautiful. That's beautiful thing yourself. Biggest influences? Oh, well, I, I grew, I, I was raised by one of my biggest influences and that was my grandma. Um, she played a really key role because I got to see it like in real life. I got to see her performing, her and my Aunt Ruthie uh, performing and their musicians and I, I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. Like I said, my, one of my first shows was right here at Rutgers 
um, mm -hmm. at the Paul Robeson Center. And I was like, Grandma, how much am I getting paid? Because I just, <laughs> felt, I just felt like, you know, I had made it because I was on stage with her. And like to this day, uh, she's not stayed on stage anymore. She's um, she performs it. She sings at church and things like that. She slowed down a lot, but any opportunity I get to sing for her in front of her to her, it's like mm -hmm. singing in front of like Michael Jackson or something for me. Mm -hmm. But I grew up uh, listening. To, I got I got an old school heart. I love Babyface. I love Luther Vandross. I love Aretha. I love Whitney. Um, just like powerhouse singers. So I, I like a lot of new singers too. Like I like um, Jennifer Hudson. I like fat Jennifer Hudson though. <laughs> I like I like I like when she I like when she was bigger. I, I think when she lost the weight she lost a little bit of her soul a little bit. But I, I like a good soulful singer like a Jasmine Sullivan. Oh my goodness. Um, I like Dawn Richards from uh, Danny mm -hmm. Kane. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but I, these I, kids may not know who Danny Kane is. But hey, my oh my goodness! <laughs> look it up. It's Google. Look, look, look up Danny Kane. <laughs> Diddy, y'all, Diddy, all of that. You'll find it. <laughs> but yeah, and I, I'm a hip. I like hip hop too. So I like I like Tupac. Uh, my stepbrother told me at a very early age that Tupac was the greatest rapper that ever lived, and that's what I live by. So <laughs> so I like Tupac. <laughs> I like um, I like Maxwell. I I mean I really like soulful singers, Andy Stone, because I feel like these people really dig inside themselves and just pour it all out to you. India Irie, oh my mm, gosh, yes. that lady pours Indeed. out everything that she has to you. So that's who I'm really inspired by. So tell me, in your opinion, what makes someone a legend? Mm -hmm. For me, of our grandmas Ooh. and all these people that. What makes them a legend? I know that may be a little subjective. Mm, of course. <laughs> For me, a legend... Legends are what most people believe to be stories. But the good thing about a story is a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. But with this story, with legends, is a beginning. But then there's this hardship that they seem to go through. But outside the hardship, they make it through. They persevere through any hardship. And after they persevere, then they go out there and they spread what they did to get out of it to somebody else. So for me, it's being able to have not only a hardship, but to overcome the hardship. But then once you overcome, once you get through that hardship, then you go back to the people and you feel like you become relatable. Every great legend usually starts off once in a distant past, there was this, there was that. Then this came along and this happened to these set of things. And then all of a sudden they did this to get out of it. And then people are inspired. Mm. And legends are extremely inspirational. Mm -hmm. But what makes certain legends for me inspirational is how relatable I find them to be to me. Especially with going through the hardship, they make it seem like you can do it too because I did it. Mm -hmm. I made it through this, and you have nothing to worry about. All you gotta do is don't give up. And yourself a legend? It really, a legend to me is really how they uh, stamp your heart, really. <laughs> um, so you have your, you have your, your famous legends. You have your your Luther Vandrosses and your Earth, Winds and Fires and your Michael Jacksons, you have those legends, but then you have um, your personal legends, your personal heroes and sheroes and how they, um, how they sit on your heart and how they've encouraged you. Um, because a lot of times with celebrities, you don't know them personally, but we can't take for granted the legends that we know personally, that we're related to, that we mm -hmm. love, that inspire us every day. So my mom is my legend, my grandma is my legend, um, my cousin, I call her my shero, her name is Shanique Banks, she, mm -hmm. is, she is a legend to me. Mm -hmm. And these are, the, and I'm thankful to have people in my life and women in my life that I can look up to and inspire to be because they set the trail before me um, and they set it on fire, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you look at, 
when you look at the fire of Aretha Franklin or the fire of Shaka Khan, I'm like, but have you met Carol Long? That's my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Have you met Harriet Starks? That's my mother. Mm -hmm. You know, so it all depends on how they stamp your heart. You know? Yes. No, that's, mm -hmm. I, I understand. It, <laughs> sometimes legends leave you speechless. Yes. 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 Think about just how, how great they are. Right. You know? So, what is the best advice you have ever received? As cheesy as this one is, don't give up. Mm -hmm. Most youth would never understand don't give up until they've gone through something that will cause them to come close to giving up. Gotcha. That's when you come close to your breaking point and you're just like, oh my God, you look to the left and you look to the right and you look up and down and you just see almost no way out. That the easy way out would just be, you know what, I'm done. I don't ever want to deal with this again. But they're also going to live regret when you do something like that mm. instead of just persevering and making it through. And when you don't give up, it becomes way better for you. So as cheesy as that advice is, don't give up. And Chantel, is there any advice you would like to give to our students who are viewing this? Oh, sure. I would say the, the best thing that I can say is to surround yourself with good people surround yourself with positive people and people that are going to have your back people who are genuine, genuinely going to uh, be honest with you and you have to also be able to be honest with yourself so honesty is the best policy surround your people with great people surround yourself with great people who are going to be honest with you who love you enough to be honest with you mm -hmm. because i mean some of the rawest honesty you will get is from somebody who's, who's raised you and loved you, like your mother. <laughs> and, and if your mother is telling you, mm -mm, that don't look good, that don't sound good. Now my mother is not a singer, but if when, I, when she had me practicing in the kitchen, if it didn't sound good, she would tell me that it didn't sound good. <laughs> you know, and that's just, that's just how it is. And if I was playing Funny Valentine in my room on the flute or the sax, because that was my mother's Favorite song that she wanted me to play, she would say, uh uh, that don't sound like Shaka Khan's version. You know? <laughs> so you gotta have people who are around you that are honest yeah. and who really wanna see you prosper and see you grow in your talent and your skill. You also need to have a great support system because there's going to be mm -hmm. times for you yes. who want to be famous and want to be the Beyonce. I'm not telling you not to be mm -hmm. because some people, I see some of these kids perform and I'm like, whoa. You know, they can knock Beyonce or whoever out the park. But you're going to need to um, to have a, a good support system and surround yourself with people who aren't so money hungry and mm -hmm. want to be in the light with you and can really let you shine. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's the best advice that I can give at this point based on my, my years of living and learning and growing. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great. So we polled the, the students. And we pulled out our audience who have asked us questions. So I'm going to ask you these questions that come straight for them. Okay. Their first question to you all is, what makes a professional professional? Mm. <laughs> Which is so simple. But it holds a lot. Think it's simple. Always be on time. Mm. If it, just like the, uh, these kids are probably so young, they don't even know uh, what's the movie, uh, Drumline. And Drumline, <laughs> the band director says, if you're five minutes early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And that is a concept that I have, uh, even yes. before Drumline came out back in the early 2000s, I've always lived by that. Always be on time. And you want to be, you want to be a little bit early too, because you never know what can happen, you never know if parking's gonna be an issue. So you wanna always be on time because that's the first time, especially if people don't know you, that's the first thing you get, you get greeted with. Mm. And that's the first thing that they really know you by. Like if you set an appointment to meet with a, with a record producer or something like that, you're gonna need to be on time because that's the first thing, like they don't know your skill, they don't know your talent. If they don't know you, they at least gonna know, oh, this kid is on time, you know? <laughs> The, yeah, that, exactly. They might not be able, they might not be able to sing as good as I thought they could, but they were on time. And that sometimes that could be the make or break moment. Um, you can have Sammy who sings 
Um, he can sing opera and all of this other stuff. And then you have Joey who just got started out, but Joey is always on time and Sammy is always a diva and he's late, you know? So <laughs> you're like, what, who do I want to work with? The guy that's on time or the diva? And most of the, if it's up to me, I'm going to pick the person that's on time. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that. Uh, Mustafa, mm -hmm. what art style do you feel is most important? If there is one that is mm. most important, mm. art, music, the theater, dance, writing. It's impossible to put any one above the other because in a lot of cases, all of them work together in some way. Mm. Have you seen any movie out there in life? There's picture, there's sometimes dance, if it's a musical thing, but then there's music, there's art, there's so much encompassed in a little film. So all of them are needed, all of them are important. There's definitely not, for me, one that I can put above the other. Even with me being a musician, I wouldn't put what I do above somebody who may be, you know, doing the, a cam like a cameraman. Mm -hmm. I would never put my job above him because mm -hmm. he, I need him to make me look good. <laughs> and, he, and I need him for my sound. If, and if it's not on point, then what's the point of me playing? Mm -hmm. Shout out to our cameraman. Here, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that, that's, it's important. And I, I, I think collaboration is very key right. yes. as artists. Yes. We all need each other to make this oh, thing work. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and we're not going to be able to create, we're not going to be able to really go forward if we don't come together on that's right. right. Um, but sadly, you all, that's all the time we have today for our lovely, lovely panelists. Uh, you can email us separately if you have any additional questions. We will definitely follow up with you and ask it maybe on the next show. You never know. I go. 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 I go